Hey, how are you YouTube? Today we're gonna finish our belly dragger building project. So we will talk about wheels and tires. We are also painting the body for this baby. I decided to go with the Proline Power Wagon. That was the plan, but the chassis and the axles had some more challenges for me. So you will see so much more in this video. So let's continue. And finally, we'll have some runtime. My name is Santiago Salinas and this is The Stuff RC. Please subscribe. Okay, let's talk about wheels and tires. DKKY was kind enough to send me two sets of tires and wheels in both configurations, 1.9 and 2.2 uh, inches. In the case of the 2.2 inches, the part number is the X003DHCKW3. And for the 1.9, we have the, um, the X003D. 9JM3H. Okay, let's take a look what is inside them. For the purpose of this video, I will only open the 2.2 tires and wheels, and I will use for the 1.9, I will use uh, some tires that, are, that I have from my Gen 8, uh, and these wheels that I bought from Amazon, uh, they are pretty neat. Okay, let's do the unboxing of these ones. So here they are. The, this rubber feels pretty sticky. I'm impressed actually, and, and it's, it's soft. And I, wa I wasn't expecting this. I, I was expecting a cheaper feeling, but not at all. Actually, they, they feel great. In the case of the wheels, I'm not a big fan of the color I received, and and I don't. I'm, I'm not a big fan. These are these ones are a nylon uh, beadlocks. So let's put them together. So it's done. All of them are assembly. As I mentioned, these screws are a pain. They require a lot of time to put them together. Yet once you you are able to to install the first three, it's fairly easy to just finish the whole assembly. So let's move forward to the 1.9 inches wheels. Each of the wheels comes in their own plastic bag. Wow. Well, see, they look nice. Let's see if they work well. <laughs> wow, these wheels are beautiful. I love them. <sighs> to measure the body and, and, and to trim it, to cut it, uh, I would use the 2.2s since this is the worst case scenario, right? Because of the size. I have a little problem here since the my screwdriver is too big or too thick to pass through this hole. So let me see if I can find one of those little wrench that actually comes with the ready to run kits. So nope, I don't think I'll be, I will be able to use this, these wheels. The problem is that these are uh, a millimeters uh, nuts. So mm, all these wrenches come with a seven millimeter nut. This is a concern. I think I would jump to the I would jump to this to the uh, to the 1.9s in order to to continue the video. So here is another issue. These screws right here are too thick. And so these are our five millimeter screws. So they will not fit. I mean, the, the old, neither these wheels will fit on them because they are too thick. So at the end, I decided to go to pretty much go with a with a with my SSD uh, Assassins uh, build locks. Uh, this is our 1.9, and with the deep woods, I think that this will do the magic. They, they fit perfectly, as you can see when you compare the the, the holes of the look the difference in size. So with this one, you you don't you won't have any troubles in any in any a. Uh, Screw, axle screw that you, that you 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 will find in a crawler. With this one, you are limited. Okay, wheels and tires are already installed. Yet this chassis is still giving me some challenges. Let me show this to you. So take a look on the chuck and this link. You see how the link sticks in the in the tire? It's pretty bad. And the other thing, you see that the tire is rubbering the the spring of the chuck. Uh, let me show it to you. Again. 
So uh, in the case of the of the chuck, I think the solution is pretty simple. I just have to move uh, the chuck from this position to any of these four positions and I will have enough clearance in order to avoid that rubbering. But in the case of the link, my plan is to get rid of these links and use stray links uh, that will be installed instead to be in the outer part of the chassis that will be in the inner part of the chassis. The problem with that is that I will have to replace this 550 can for a 540 can because if you notice this motor is blocking the access for the for the this to these holes right here. So that's the plan. I'm gonna visit my friends from Hurricane Hobbies to see if they have a, a, a motor and to see if they have a, the links uh, the links that I need for, for this to execute this plan. So see you in a sec. After one and a half hours discussing how to fix this problem plus other RCs, this is what we came up. The ones that actually look that they will, they are the perfect fit are the Arma part number AR330542. So what is gonna happen is I gonna move the links to the inner part of the truck. Well guys, after a lot of time trying to install these links, uh, um, uh, I realized that it's impossible uh, and the problem is the 550 can. The 550 can is blocking these two holes right here and also this one right here. So, and these are the ones, pretty much this one and this one is, are the ones that I need in order to have uh, enough space between the this mount here and the one that is in the axle. So I think I'm gonna order a 550, a 540 can. Uh, a week and a half later, I finally have my 540 can. I decided to go with the with the Crawlmaster uh, 540 13 turns. I hope this is this is this this performs well. Um, and let's see if it works. I'll be back in a second. Let me install this and 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 then we will. We will see if we am able to install the this link, these links right here. Motor install. So now and now, as you can see, with the with the four with the 540, the three holes right here are free, so you can use either of them. And there you go, guys. So. This is, this is the way it has to work. I mean, the biggest motor you can use in this chassis is the 540. Anything smaller than that will work perfectly. Anything bigger than that, it won't work. As you can see, the links fit perfectly. Uh, I'm really happy with them. And this link right here uh, is almost kissing the, the, the motor. You can see that there is just a tiny gap between the motor and the link, but that works perfectly because I have I have all the, this articulation and it feels so much smoother than 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 the than using those this uh this weird blended uh, links. I don't know why they de decided to go for this stuff, but this this is this is not working. So let's see, uh, I'm gonna install the Wilson tires and to see if we solve the whole problem with the rubbering and things. So let's do it. The other thing I, I forgot to mention and this, I'm gonna buy this to you is that I'm gonna replace these nuts. The reason why is because they don't have the proper tolerance. Um, when you install any wheel, actually they get stuck here. So so uh, just replace them go for i'm pretty sure everybody has like a spare uh, wheel nuts uh, so just replace them wilson tires are installed yet i have a small problem let's see let me move this a little bit and you will notice i have a lot of rotation in the axle look when i press it Look how the servo moves. It's, it's, it's rotating in this in this in, in this direction. So um, what I'm gonna do, I will try to move the links. 
Actually, I will move them. It's not that I'm not, I'm, I will try. I will move the links and let's see what happens. I, I think that will correct the problem. Here, what I did is that I, I made this, um, I made these links shorter. I mean, I tightened as much as I could. Um, so, and actually that, that helps a lot. Uh, right now, I still have some rotation in the act. And let me see if you can see it. I still have some rotation in the axle, but it is so much less. So uh, the problem with this one is that I need even shorter links and I think that will fix the issue. Uh, yet I don't have them right now and, and, and for the purpose of this video, I won't change these ones because I, I, can, I, I actually can live with that, with that rotation that I, that I, that I have. Um, so the other thing I did, to be fair, a lot of, of you guys, uh, Give me some gave me some comments in my pre uh, previous videos related with this building project that I install um, the the skid place in the in the in in in, in the wrong way. I was surely they were upside down. I already fixed that, uh, so it now now they are in the way they supposed to. So thank you for those comments. And um, pretty much what this is what I have done. Uh, and finally, the problem has been solved. But the only thing I don't like is that I had to put my chocks in this position that is like, a, I wasn't expecting to use any of these four um, holes, but no, actually I actually had to use this one in order to avoid that rubber in between the tire and the shock. Uh, but it is solved, so I wanna leave it like that. I, I have full travel. Uh, so let's move forward, finally move forward to with the body. For the body, I decided to go with the J Concepts uh, crib. So, but I found this version of the crib that is just the cabin. Uh, so I think it's a great fit for a belly dragger. And let's see, I, I will have to trim a little bit on the back. So let me take care of the body to trim it a little bit and then I'll be back. A quick update here guys. Um, so I was able because I was I didn't feel comfortable to use this row of, of holes, right? And, and, and this one, the one on the front is the worst one for me. So, but I was able to use this one and the way I did it is I put smaller spacers for the chocks right here. So I removed these ones and I put a smaller one and that made the magic. So I was able to use this hole up here. So the center of gravity, I, I pretty much lower my chassis in that, in that way. So my center of gravity will be lower. So this is the way to go. So I already, as you see, I already installed the, the body post. And actually I have something else to show you. To install the body, I will use these magnets that I found from DKKY. As, as you know, I like this brand. Um, so the part numbers are the V09MRZ9V9P. So let's see what is inside. So inside the bag, you will find two magnet mounts. I'm gonna call them in that way. If you pretty strong. The way they work is that you can adjust them, them and then hold them with a screw right here once you find the right adjustment. And pretty much what you can do, what you have to do is just check what is the distance between your body post and then you will just screw them there. Uh, pretty easy. And then you have to screw this other part to the body uh, using this, uh, this, the screws that they provide plus these washers. I will show it to you. Okay, let's move forward with the body. See you in a sec. <laughs> well, I will have to say that it looks beautiful. Yet I made a few mistakes. I can see that actually I, let, I, I didn't put enough candy color up here. Um, and um, let me see what else. And the same story here. I think it's because of the this because of these uh, windows. They have this this small step right here, so that uh, made the cause this this problem. But still, I'm pretty happy with it. 
And it is finally finished. And I really love the way it looks. Look at this truck. So cool. Uh, so what I did with the body is I used Tamiya paint, uh, candy red for the red parts, and I back it with uh, silver and black for the black parts, right? Uh, the, the magnetic, the magnetic uh, mounts, these are pretty cool. Highly, I highly recommend them. Uh, it's very secure, look. And this is a really heavy truck. Uh, so the way they, they work is uh, you have to open two holes to the body and then just pass through there uh, two screws that actually they provide with it in these in this plastic washers to protect the body. And then you screw the, the, the actual magnet uh, down there. I put some pads there in order to protect the paint. Uh, and for the other part, uh, the only thing you have to do is install them on the body post and you are good to go. What I did for the rear part of the truck, I opened two holes, one here and one here, and I installed the body post right here. I don't know if you are able to see them uh, with this angle. So what it happens is you have to pass through this, uh, you have to pass through the, the these holes, the, the body post, and, and then it's secure. And, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I add some accessories uh, to add some realism to the to the truck, and I hope this performs in the way in the same way it looks. Uh, so I think the only thing left is to take it outside and to see what this baby is capable to do. So let's do it.
these are my final thoughts. I'm so happy with the performance of this crawler. Such a capable thing. Um, I'm extremely satisfied with the end result of this project. I'm gonna make a quick recap of the main components we use for this uh, in this project. Uh, I will start with the chassis. The chassis, uh, it, this is all by uh, Muse Racing and Endura. Uh, it's a great chassis. I really love that six degrees uh, inclination that it has. It makes a huge difference when you are climbing. So uh, it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of options. Yet it will require a lot of tuning. Uh, so if you are someone who likes to tune your truck in order to find the perfect setting and you like to play a lot uh, with uh, different options and different settings, this is the chassis. This is a great chassis for you. If you are someone who, who likes something straightforward, just go for one of those builders kit that uh, from Axial or for Traxxas uh, or Element uh, RC. That's your thing. Uh, now let's jump to the axles. The axles are beautiful and they are heavy. So uh, they, they lower your center of gravity and they perform pretty well in the rocks. Uh, yet I have two concerns with, with it. Or, or, uh, the first one is that this, this, uh, this chat, this wheel uh, bolts or this wheel uh, uh, screws, whatever you want to call them, these are too thick that limited you with the wheels you will be able to use on it. So in my case, from all my wheels, the only ones that fit were the Assassins from SSSD. Uh, so uh, that's something that you have to keep in mind uh, if you decide to go for the DKKY axles for the XCX102. Uh, the other thing is that uh, in my second video I, of this series, I mentioned that this axle has have two bolts, two tiny bolts right here. Uh, I don't. I, I think you're able to see them there. So I was concerned in that video uh, about if if those two screws will hook in whatever obstacle that is in front of the truck, and that will and, and that could cause some trouble. And that is the case. So I have to figure it out how to put a small plate there in order to to help the truck to just jump on, uh, on top of um, an obstacle instead of, of, of getting hooked there. Right. The body and the body mounts. Uh, this body is amazing. It's super lightweight. Uh, it's pretty narrow as you can see. So you won't have any troubles with uh, if you decide to go for 2.2 uh, wheels. In, the, in this case I use a, a 1.9. But it is a great body and I really love that they are selling now just the cutting of the creep from uh, Jake Concepts. A uh, really, really nice body. I love the way, uh, the, the, the way it looks. I love the performance that uh, gives you, that gives to, the, to your truck thanks to the lightweight it has. Uh, these body mounts also work great with this when the configuration I use. Next, the motor. I was concerned because I was using a 540 uh, cam motor from uh, Homes Hobbies, the Acrol Master, 13 turns. Uh, but I was totally wrong. I mean, this 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 motor is pretty good. It handles the truck pretty well. Didn't have any problems, even though it's a pretty heavy rig. So great motor. Uh, thumbs up there, uh, Homes Hobbies. Uh, so the, the chocks from uh, the TRX4 are great and uh, they, 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 they perform amazingly uh, in, the, in the rocks. The, that chip transmission that I got for this uh, uh, truck also, I was super concerned about it, but it, may, it did a great job on the rocks, it, but it's a little bit uh, noisy. So, but is performance wise is really, really good. Finally, I want to uh, finish with the steering servo from Fittech. Uh, this is the 40 kilograms uh, steering uh, servo uh, brushless, the brushless version from, from Fittech, as I mentioned. It is a pretty capable servo, extremely strong. It is fast. It just did an amazing job. So go for that one. It, that's a pretty good option. I'm going to leave the links the links below for all these uh, all the components or parts I used for the for this truck. Please use those links because they will give me a tiny percentage of the purchase in the case you decide to buy any of these components. 
and that will help this channel uh, to, to continue giving you uh, advice and to showing you this kind of projects. So my final words are that I had a lot of fun. It took me a lot of time to finish these this, 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 uh, projects. I've been in different kind of stuff in this, in the, this last two months. Uh, but the end result is, is so, uh, so great. I mean, I feel so happy, so satisfied of, of, of what I did. Um, and the performance was great. I mean, all the components are, are behaving pretty, pretty good. Uh, I'm, 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 amazed, I'm amazed since this is a Frankenstein. Uh, it's, it's just a, I put uh, different components from different brands from even different platforms and it worked, I mean, pretty well. And that's this hobby, right? To share uh, ideas and to just try, ex experiment, uh, experiment new, new, new ways to, to, to build things. So guys, uh, the only thing that I have left, left to say is thank you very much. My name is Santiago Salinas and see you next time. I hope all, all the, these videos were helpful uh, for you, the whole series. I tried to show you my experience uh, in order to make easier your building uh, experience if you decide to go with any of these components. Take care, guys. See you.